Good morning, guys. We're sitting here with Josh Teague, a local attorney here in Gilmer County. We recently um, put a form on our website asking our clients to submit some questions, ask some questions. Um, one of the most overwhelming questions was, Josh, people wanted to know what your ties are to the community. Are you from here? Did you go to school here? Why are you here? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I, I actually grew up here in L.A.J. I lived here my entire life, other than a few years I was away at school. Uh, my family is all here, except for a couple cousins who live uh, out of state. All my wife's family's here. Uh, graduated from high school here in Gilmer County in 2002. Uh, went to college at Kennesaw State University uh, while I was still working here in Gilmer County for another attorney. Uh, went off to law school. Uh, during law school, I was able to intern with two of our superior court judges here. And after finishing law school and an internship with a federal prosecutor, I decided I wanted to move back home. And I have uh, been thrilled to finally be able to open my own practice here and help serve the people of Gilmer County. So, so you graduated 2001, 2002. Where'd you go to law school? The law school at uh, Coastal Law School. It's a private law school in Jacksonville, Florida. It's a little bit different than here on the mountainside. It was, and uh, you know, it's nice to be at the beach for a couple years, but definitely missed the mountains, and we were ready to be home at the end of the three years. So you're, you're pretty rooted here in the community. You and your wife both live here, work here, your kids go to school here. Yes, um, I, I, like I said, I've finally been able to open my own practice here. I've been here uh, with another firm for the six years previous to this, um, practicing criminal um, injury, bankruptcy law there, and some, some other things as well. My wife uh, runs a medical facility here. She's a nurse. Uh, our, our daughter goes to school at North Georgia Christian. Uh, our son, uh, he, he's just about to turn two years old, and he'll, he'll, turn, he'll attend a school here as well. Um, my wife's grandmother is actually the uh, clerk of court here in Gilmer County, awesome. and that's one of the ways we got to meet when I was working for an attorney while I was in high school, she was working for her grandmother at the clerk's office. So, uh, the law has done a lot more for me than uh, just just provide an income. Well, that's funny how those pieces all come together. Well, that actually leads into our next question. People want to know how long have you actually been on your own here at your office? You know, we're right here across from Hardy's at the at the bridge. Um, when did you open this practice? So we actually opened up on uh, March first of this year. Now, I've been practicing for six years before this, been involved in the legal field since I was 18 years old, but uh, out on my own since March 1st of this year, and I uh, absolutely love it so far. So you, you've really committed your whole life to this. A lot of people, you know, they would make that decision to pursue law school maybe after their first year, second year, third year of college, but you seem that you were pretty dead set you know, from the time you were 16, 17, 18 years old that this is the field that you wanted to be in. Yeah, you know, I was in high school when I figured out I wanted to be an attorney, and um, that all stems from I like helping people. I like being able to fight for people who can't stand up for themselves or can't fight for themselves, whether it be because they don't have a voice or they simply don't know how to. Especially in the legal field, there's a lot of complex situations, a lot of hurdles to being able to do that for yourself. So I really enjoy being able to fight for those people uh, when they need it most. and. You know, when I was in college, uh, there was always maybe a backup plan, but this was what I, I wanted to do. This was always the uh, number one thing for me, was to be able to attend law school and help people right here in LJ and all over the North Georgia mountains. Well, I, I mean, I think, you know, a lot of business, a lot of people here, they, they need an advocate for them. That's something that I figured out myself is that people have a hard time here defending themselves because they don't really know the hurdles and bounds and boundaries that they've got to stay in when setting up businesses or, you know, if they've stumbled and, and got themselves into something because of one poor decision. You know, if, if you could suggest anything to somebody that, that's made a simple mistake, you know, whether it be drinking and driving or criminal law, you know, what would it be? What would be the first thing that you would suggest them to do? Well. You know, with, with any issue, whatever it may be, whether it's a criminal issue or a business issue, uh, the best thing is always to be proactive. And, and by doing that, I mean don't wait until the last possible minute. Don't wait uh, until you're running up on a deadline for court or for a filing with the state or for something else before you contact someone for help. You know, right away, if you know that there's an issue that you're facing, 
get in touch with an attorney. Call me, call another local attorney. Um, I'd be glad to help you, be glad to talk to you on whatever it is. And if it's something that I can't help you with, I'll definitely put you in touch with somebody who can. Uh, but the most important thing is being proactive because a lot of times I see people who have waited until something has happened that it's much, much harder to then rectify the situation when if they had came in initially, I could have saved them a lot of money, saved them a lot of heartache, and potentially saved them a lot of time and punishment that may go on later. Well, I know with some of my conversations with you with certain things that, that they are time frames, certain days, up to 10 days or 30 days, that if you don't act in those, it can actually change the whole outcome of what you're doing, such like with the DUI. I mean, isn't that something that if you get pulled over for a DUI and get charged with it, that the, the first 10 days are crucial in that? Yeah, and actually, that's something that goes along with a DUI arrest that isn't necessarily criminal, but it's an administrative action that the state started. So whenever you're stopped for a DUI and arrested, they can issue us administrative or a civil license suspension before the DUI is completed. And until uh, July 1st of this year, you had 10 days, 10 business days, to send in an appeal of that suspension or your license would be automatically suspended. Now, the laws just recently went under a substantial change and instead of 10 business days, you have 30 calendar days. And we're gonna be putting up a blog post um, just in the next couple of days to explain the changes in that law and to compare the old law and the new law. And if your arrest was made before July 1st, the old law will still apply. If it was made after July 1st, the new law will apply to your license suspension. But it's absolutely critical that you act within just a few days of that initial stop. In fact, I've even had cases where because we didn't act within the or because the client didn't act within the first seven days, we lost some valuable security camera footage that would have exonerated them much, much sooner in a case. Well, I mean, 30, 30 days sounds like a long time, but I would assume if you're in a situation, I mean, it would be a whirlwind and you're, you know, you're going to lose track of time pretty quickly. And on the flip side of that, I mean, 30 days is also a lot of time for somebody to to accumulate collective data against you, just like you said with security cam footages. So by acting quickly, you know, you're able to get a better result, you know, based upon the actions of everybody else involved. So, you know, I would suggest if anybody has any issues or they get any type of trouble that the minute they can, that they contact you. Um, you know, and, and that leads into the, one of the most popular questions is, what should I do if I get a DUI? If I get pulled over Friday night and they put me in jail and I get out, what is the first thing I should do? So the first thing you should do after you get out, contact an attorney. Right? And contact a DUI attorney. Contact someone who focuses on DUI. It doesn't have to necessarily be the only thing they do, but it should be the majority of what they do. Uh, DUI is a very nuanced and specialized field. There's a lot of science in the field. Uh, there's a lot of extra training and classes that any good DUI attorney will have taken uh, that will give them some specialized knowledge or experience in the field that someone who is out practicing another type of law may not have. So it's absolutely critical to immediately get in touch with that attorney, tell them about your case, and let them be able to tell you this is exactly what you need to do now. And absolutely call me. I'll be glad to talk to any of you if you're facing that issue. And I mean, do you suggest that, that everybody that's facing DUI charges have an attorney? I mean, is that something that is, is, is critical? Absolutely. And uh, that is because a experienced DUI attorney can look at an arrest report. They can talk to you. They can listen to you hear what you have to say about that experience, about that night or about that day when you were stopped, and they may be able to pick up something that seemed insignificant to you or small to you that could uh, result in an entire change in the outcome of that case. And I've had people come in to see me before and felt like their case was helpless, uh, you know, that they were absolutely hopeless in, in the outcome of that case, and we've been able to get great results for them. And you know, obviously it's not every case that we're able to get the same results, but talk to an attorney, talk to somebody, let them tell you, don't just give up, don't just roll over. You, you could lose your license, you could lose your job, you may not be able to get another job in the future if you have a DUI conviction on your record.
Well, I know, yeah, a lot of this has impactful, you know, changes in your life down down the road, and it, it can really chain into something else. I mean, a simple traffic stop could lead into you losing your job, losing your home, losing your family. So I think it's very important, you know, that you seek, you know, the guidance that need from an attorney as soon as possible. Um, and, you know, and with that question, a lot of people want to know, you know, if I'm under 21, are the rules different? If I get pulled over for a DUI and I'm under 21, you know, obviously you're, you're drinking under the, the age, but does everything else fall under the same type of category as if I'm over 21? Um, it's absolutely different if you're under 21. The legal limit for alcohol consumption is different for people under 21. It's actually 0 0.02 instead of 0 0.08, and 0 0.02 is really the margin of error on a breath test machine. So if you have any alcohol in your system at all, you could be charged with a DUI, potentially, if you're under 21. So it's pretty much zero tolerance. It, it is, um, and that also comes with different consequences. If you're over 21, uh, we can potentially get you a limited driving permit to continue to allow you to drive to work. But if you're under 21 and you get a DUI, you, you face a hard suspension with no type of driving permit where you would not be able to drive at all. So there's a lot of different consequences and there's some ways an experienced DUI attorney can help um, help you face that challenge and get around those. Uh, so it is absolutely critical uh, whether you're 21 or under 21 to get in touch with somebody as soon as possible. Well it seems that if you're under 21 the, the impact on your life that, that drinking and driving will have is is far more substantial. Um, you know obviously you're, you're facing you know, underage consumption and all these other ones, but it, it can, I mean, if you can't drive to work and you've got to depend on somebody else, I mean, that's going to impact your lifestyle pr pretty, pretty harshly. You know, Josh, a lot of people want to know, you know, do you plan to run for office again? Well, obviously I ran uh, during the last election cycle for probate judge and it was a close race, but at this point I don't have uh, any plans run for office again. I enjoyed my time on the campaign trail, uh, getting to meet a lot of people I didn't know here in the community, but I'm very happy with where I'm at. I'm glad I've got my own practice going now, and at the moment, I have no plans to run in the future. Well, I think from the conversations we've had that, that your focus is to grow this, um, this practice and really to serve those people of Gilmer County. And I think that you would do a better job here on the ground being an advocate for people as opposed to sending them, you know, eye to eye in a courtroom. Um, you know, if you could recommend anything to the people of this county, you know, as far as drinking, driving, criminal law, you know, what, what would it be? What do you see the main issue in this county is right now? Well, that's a tough question. There's a lot of things we see on a daily basis and, you know, in the position I am, I, I generally get to see people on their worst days. Right. I see people after they've been arrested. I see people after a loved one's passed away and they need to probate in the state. I see somebody after they've been involved in an accident or a family member's been involved in an accident or maybe a family member's been killed and, uh, and we're looking to recover some compensation for that, for the injuries that they've suffered. It's not very often that we get to talk to people on those good days. And, you know, when you're having that difficult time when you're facing that time in your life that seems like you just don't know where to turn or where to go reach out for help you know whatever it is reach out for help someone will be able to help you and that's what we like to do here that's why we're here is to serve everybody in this county who needs somebody to fight for them or needs somebody to stand up for them when times just seem like they're not going to get any better well we've talked a lot about DUI and criminal but your practice, you do offer other services. You want to touch on those just a little bit? Yeah, I mean, the main area of my practice is criminal and DUI law. But we also do injury cases. So we, uh, so we represent people who have been injured in car accidents or maybe uh, who have a family member who ha they have a wrongful death lawsuit for. Uh, there's been a trucking accident, motorcycle accident. We also represent people who are in debt and need to file bankruptcy. One of uh, my favorite parts of this job is going to do adoptions. Uh, that's something that we really enjoy doing. We do get to see people on a good day there. Uh, we also do estate planning 
if someone needs a new will drawn up, needs an old will, uh, an old will uh, reviewed to see if any changes need to be made. So uh, we do business law as well. We consult with businesses, look at potential problems, how to resolve those, uh, review and draw up contracts and agreements. So if there's any issue that you're facing, uh, please give us a call. I'll talk to you. Uh, if I can't help you with it, I will recommend you to someone who can. Well, the, with the estate planning and the and the business law, I mean, those are things that can actually be proactive for somebody. I mean, that's not something that they have to wait around until there's an issue, you know, and then call you. Um, you know, do you do you see that people often wait too long with estate planning? Is that something that people just put off, and it's just it's simple and easy just to get out of the way. I mean, I, I know people think that could be a complicated process, and they have time. And, but is it something that you see that just, you know, is easy to get out of the way and that will give you that peace of mind? It really is. And uh, a lot of times we end up on the other side of this when we're helping someone on an estate where a will just hadn't been updated to reflect current changes in that person's life or where the will's lost and a family member can't find it. And it, it's a simple thing in being proactive. Uh, it's a few minutes here in my office talking to me, telling me what you want. I'll get the papers drawn up. We may go through a couple drafts to get them exactly how you want. And when we do, you sign them. The worst part of it is really just talking about it. A lot of people uh, are uncomfortable facing that reality and uncomfortable preparing for that. But we, we all know at some point uh, we're going to need a will. We're going to need estate planning. We're going to need a power of an attorney or, uh, or a health care directive. And these are you know, simple, easy forms that we can get filled out for you, that we can draft up. And, it, and if you do have a complicated situation, we can take care of that as well. But for most people, for an average person, it's not a complicated issue. And it is something that should be reviewed and probably changed anytime you have a major life change. If, you're, if you get married, if you have children, if you have a family member pass away, these are all things that should be addressed in a current will that you have or to have a new will made to, uh, to protect your goals going forward and one of the one of the last questions that pops in um you know is, is it worth hiring attorney over you know an average traffic stop or an average violation i mean is is it going to be worth spending the money compared to what the ticket is going to cost well it really depends you know if, if you get a seat belt violation and it's a it's a 25 dollar right. ticket you you probably don't want to hire an attorney on that Maybe you had your seatbelt on and you got the ticket and you just feel like it's a matter of principle, we'll be glad to talk to you. If you got a speeding ticket, it may be worth it for you. Your, your insurance could potentially go up. If you have a work vehicle you drive, your employer provides with you, it could interfere with your employment. It could interfere uh, with other areas of your life as well. So we're glad to talk to somebody even on a, on a minor traffic offense if it's something that we can help you with. Uh, absolutely. We'll be glad to jump in there and go to court with you. Well, a lot of people don't think think far enough down the road when it comes to a minor traffic stop. You know how impactful that can be. But you're right. You know, especially if you're if you're driving a company vehicle and you get pulled over. You know, I mean that has ramifications. You know, down two or three different avenues in your life. So, you know, it it may be worth it, folks, if you you know have a, a, just a simple violation just to give a call and see what the benefits of having Josh represent you with that can be. Um, and so we've got some stuff coming up. We haven't really solidified dates and times yet, but you are planning an open house here soon. Um, you want to touch on that? Yeah, uh, we're, we're looking at the 1st of August. We'll be having an open house, uh, provide some light snacks and refreshments, have everybody come by, have a chance to talk to me. If you've got a question, an issue you'd like to speak about for a minute, We'll be glad to then uh, check out our office, meet our staff, and uh, just see if there's anything we could help you with. Right, and we'll be putting all that on, on the Facebook page, on the blog, on the website, so there'll be plenty of communication. Um, it'll be on the chamber calendar, so everybody should have an opportunity to see when it is and where it is. So, um, and, you know, in closing, Josh, is there just anything that you want to say or address to people, um, you know, that... that you know, something that you've had on your mind or anything like that? Well, I'd just like to say thank you. Uh, as I said, we opened up here March 1st, and the response has been terrific. We have been very, very busy. I feel very blessed to be a part of this community and to be able to reach out to so many of you, uh, serve so many of you, and help you with the issues that you're facing. 
on a day-to-day -day basis. And if there's ever anything I can do for anybody that's listening to this, please call. If, uh, if there's an issue that you have, I'll be glad to talk to you about it. And if I can help you, we absolutely will. And where's your office located? We're located uh, at 35 First uh, First Avenue, which is directly beside the East Town Bridge, right in front of West Block, uh, across the street from uh, the Hardee's and Arby's uh, intersection. And the phone number here? 706-276-3636. Well, Josh, we appreciate you taking the time um, to put this together. I know that this information could help a lot of people and, and clear up some stuff. We'll be doing more of these in the future when we'll, you know, dive into very specific issues and try to, you know, shed some light. I know a lot of people, they, they, they don't take proactive steps because they don't understand the process or they're afraid of the process. So our hopes is, you know, to educate folks a little bit and clarify some of this process so they can be more proactive in their lives. Um, we appreciate everybody that's watching this and we thank you. Thank you.